we're going to be adding and subtracting mixed numbers and we're going to be regrouping and this is lesson 7b and of course like always we have links in the description to help you out if you've missed or skipped any previous videos or get lost to add or subtract mixed numbers we first need to make sure they have a common denominator it's the same thing as adding fractions we just now have a whole number we're going to deal with if they do have the same denominator we add their numerators together and keep the denominator they both have then we reduce the fraction sum or difference to its lowest terms and we did that in video 6b reducing if the fractions of the mixed numbers have different denominators they are unlike fractions and we need to find them a common denominator by finding common multiples okay so I want you to remember this that any fraction with the same numerator and denominator is one it's one whole if you have something split into three parts but you have all three parts you've got the whole thing okay so keep that in mind that's going to help us so if we have mixed numbers with common denominators that's going to be easy all we have to do is add the numerators just like we did when we were just adding fractions see if we were just adding fractions and had one eighth and three eighths it would make four eighths so all we have to do is then add the whole number we have three and four eighths but this needs to be reduced we can divide this four by a four and the eight by a four we find the largest number that we can divide them by that way we don't have to reduce so much that's going to give us three and a half now if we had divided both of these by a two we would have gotten watch we could have done it that way we could have divided by two and divided by two and that would have given us two fourths but then we would have had to do it again we would have had to divide by two and divide by two to get the one half see so by dividing by the largest number we can we don't have to reduce so much so this way will work just keep doing two 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 but you'll have more work to do all right take a look at this we have a subtraction problem they have the same denominator so we just subtract the numerator five take away one is a four we subtract the whole numbers five take away two is a three but this needs to be reduced the four can be divided by two and so can the six and we'll get three and two-thirds so if they already have a common denominator it's pretty easy and straightforward just subtract the numerator subtract the whole number okay just make sure you reduce if you mark down three and four six as the answer it will be wrong okay and they might even trick you on the GED test and offer three and four six as one of the answers when really it should be reduced to three and two-thirds so be very very careful all right now for this one we're adding the numerators they have the same denominator so we just add the numerators it's an addition problem we have six plus five is eleven we add the whole numbers we get a six but that's an improper fraction and we can pull out a seven sevenths remember when the numerator and denominator is the same it equals one whole so we can pull a seven sevenths out of this eleven sevenths and there'll be four sevenths left over so that six and that one that seven sevenths is a one gives us a seven as a whole number and the four sevenths as the fraction see that we're just literally pulling out a seven sevenths and making it a one and giving it to the six okay now sometimes we may need to ask the whole number for help to regroup if we have seven and three eighths and we want to take away three and five eighths well we can't have three and take five away so what we do is we say okay seven can we have one and he says sure he becomes a six and he gives an eight eighths see because the numerator and denominator are the same that's a one he gives an eight eighths to the fractions so now we add that eight eighths to the three eighths and get an eleven eighths so we have six and eleven eighths now we can take away that three and five eighths eleven take away five is six we have six eighths we subtract the whole numbers and get a three now this three and six eighths can be reduced we can divide both of them by a two and get three and three fourths see so there, it's not that it's hard it's just that there's a lot of little baby steps and if you remember that when the numerator and denominator are the same you can pull one hole out that's going to help a lot okay whether you're regrouping from subtracting or you are 
regrouping to add, okay? So just take one from the whole number as a fraction with the same numerator and denominator. If we have five and two ninths and we want to take away seven ninths, we can't have two and take seven away. So the five becomes a four and gives a nine ninths to the fraction. Now we have four and 11 ninths, see, because nine plus two is 11. Now we can take away that seven ninths and we have four and four ninths left over, okay? Now, when we have unlike mixed numbers, we're trying to add four and three fifths to two and one tenth, see that? We need to give them the same denominator. So we make a list of multiples for the denominators, the five and the 10. We see they can meet at the 10. So this one's not gonna have to change at all. He's already a 10 for a denominator, but this one needs to be multiplied by two to become the 10. So the numerator gets jealous. It wants to be multiplied by two, so we have six tenths. Now we can add them. They have the same denominator. Six tenths and one tenth is seven tenths. We add the whole number, we get a six, okay? So don't forget, we can use multiples to find the common denominator, all right? Now this one's gonna be quite a lot of work. Take a look at this. We have nine and one third, and we want to take away four and three fourths. So they're unlike. They don't have the same denominator. So the first thing we've got to do is give them the same denominator. We make a list of multiples for the three, a list of multiples for the four. We can see they can meet at 12. So we ask ourselves, what does three need to be 12? Multiplied by four. The one gets jealous. It gets multiplied by four. We have four twelfths. Now what does the four need to get to be a 12? It needs to be multiplied by three. We multiply the numerator by three. We have nine twelfths. Now we have nine and four twelfths minus four and nine twelfths. Well, we have four take away nine. So we have to ask the nine if we can have one and give it to the fraction. So he becomes an eight, and because our denominator is a 12, he gives a 12 twelfths as a one to the fraction. And 12 twelfths and 4 twelfths is 16 twelfths. So now we have 8 and 16 twelfths. See? Now we can take that 9 twelfths away. Nine take, 16 take away 9 is a 7. We have 7 twelfths for the fraction. We do 8 take away 4 and have a 4. See? So sometimes we, mean, we may need to find a common denominator and regroup to subtract. If you want more practice than the Skill Focus offers in your big GED book, you can get... There's a Steck Vaughn GED math exercise book that's only 172 pages, and it's got extra problems in it, okay? It's kind of thin. It's maybe a fourth of the thickness of the big GED book, okay? But you'll get extra practice, all right? Now, you should be ready to do the skill focus on page 91. And if you understood this video and you do that skill focus and you seem to be able to answer them with no problem, then you're ready for the next lesson. If you do have problems, remember that if a fraction word problem is confusing, just pretend you're dealing with whole numbers to find the operation to solve it. If it's got a bunch of fractions, pretend they're whole numbers and try to solve it that way. It might make it easier on your brain to see what operation, add, subtract, multiply, or divide that you need to do, okay? So I've got a couple word problems it says, which statement determines the width of the door for the diagram? So we have a wall here, and this side of the wall is 7 and 3 eighths. This side of the wall is 9 and 1 fourth. And it wants us to figure out what the width of the door is. And it says the whole wall is 19 and 5 eighths feet. See? So which one of these equations would be the right equation to find the width of the door? So what if it said this was 19 feet and that was 17, 7 feet and that was 9 feet? Well, if we take away the fractions out of this and just think, okay, well, that's 19. If that's 7 and that's 9, we're trying to figure this out. We can add the 7 and 9 together, right, and get a 16. And then we can just take the 16 away from the 19 and find out what that is, right? That would be a 3, so that would be 3 feet across. Well, same thing with the fractions. We're going to take this big number, the 19 and 5 eighths, and we're going to add these two together. Once we get the sum for these, we're going to subtract it from that big guy, okay? So it's going to start with the 19, 
and we need to add these two together, right? So these are subtracting the two sides of the wall together, so that's not the right one. This one's subtracting the two sides of the wall, so it's not the right one. This one is adding their total to the 19, so that's not the right one. We need to take it away. See how we're using process of elimination to find the right one? This one says add these two together and subtract that and subtract the 19 from these two. Well, that's backwards. We have to take this total away from the 19, not the 19 away from that total, so that's not the right one either. And that leaves us number three. We take the 19 and 5 eighths, and after adding these together, we subtract this total from that 19 and 5 eighths, and we'll get our answer. Okay, so we need to subtract the sum of both sides of the wall from the total width of the wall. And whatever's left over will be the width of the door. We added these two together, subtracted that sum from the big number of the wall, and whatever was left over was the door. Okay, and you might come across problems like this on the test. So this is kind of important. All right, let's try another one. Tala has seven and one six yards of fabric. Well, she only needs five and one-third yards to make some curtains. So how much fabric is going to be left over? So we've got seven and one-six, and we need to figure out how much will be left after five and a third yards are used. So what we do is we take the five and one-third away from the seven and one-six. And they have different denominators, so we need their denominators to be matched. They need common denominators. So we know that the three can meet at the six because three times two is six. So this one isn't going to change. It's going to stay as 7 and 1, 6. But the 3 needs to be multiplied by a 2 to become a 6. The 1 becomes jealous. It wants to be multiplied by 2. Now we need to subtract 7 and 1, 6 minus 5 and 2, 6. But you can't have 1 and take 2 away, can you? So we have to ask 7 for a 6, 6 as a 1 whole. Now 7 becomes a 6. It gives a 6, 6 as a 1 whole. And then here's that one sixth that it had and it gives the six six to the fraction this six six plus one six is seven six so now we have six and seven six now we can take that five and two six away seven take away five seven take away two is a five and six take away five is a one so there's going to be one and five six yards of fabric left over see a lot of little steps. We had to match the, the denominator first. Then we had to regroup and take one whole away from the 7 as the same numerator and denominator, give it to the fraction so that we could subtract. See? She probably has enough left over to make some pillows to match those curtains now too, right? Our next video is going to be multiplying fractions and mixed numbers. So make sure you understand what you're doing so far before you move on because... We're getting more and more involved in this, okay? If you need more help, there's going to be links to these videos that will help you. And they talk about adding and subtracting fractions and mixed numbers and regrouping. So if you want some extra help and extra practice, watch these videos. They're a click away in the description, okay? And there'll be links to the previous lessons we did in this playlist, okay? So we're going to move on and talk about multiplying fractions and mixed numbers, and I hope you do well on the skill focus, and I'll see you next time, okay? Bye.